Hey, fanboy nation. This is your pal Daffy Duck, and you're watching. You're watching. We're watching. You're watching. Fanboy. 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 A fanboy, etc. Fanboy nation. Dot. I assume. Uh, um. <laughs> All right. Well, Josh Caldwell and Perry Garcia, Matt Field, congratulations. You know, we are talking San Diego International Film Festival with Mending the Line as you star uh, opposite Brian Cox. Congratulations. Uh, uh, the film screens on Saturday, October 22nd, correct? Yes, we're very excited for the world to get to see yeah, it. This is, uh, you know, this is a story that, uh, well, I, it's better if Josh tells us since he's the director. I don't want to yeah, do it injustice. It's all right. I've, I've, I've done it a lot. So um, Mending the Line is uh, it's the story of a uh, young Marine uh, played by Sinqua Walls who is uh, wounded in Afghanistan. And he's sent to a v VA clinic in Montana where he meets a uh, Vietnam vet played by Brian Cox who teaches him how to fly fish as a way of dealing with his trauma. And is this a semi autobiography It's, it's or fictional. It was fictional? actually, uh, it, our writer, Stephen, wrote it a, a bit as a love letter to his father, who was a Vietnam vet and uh, it passed away due to uh, Agent Orange exposure uh, recently. And, um, you know, it's not a tr based on a true story, but it's based on many true stories. Um, you know, the a idea of fly fishing as a way of dealing with trauma um, is happening all over the country by a number of organizations. We partnered with one in particular, Warriors in Quiet Waters, which is based in Bozeman. Um, and what they do is they take uh, post 9-11 combat veterans and they invite them out to Montana and they give them waders and fly rods and and take them fishing for a week and, and sort of show them the therapeutic benefits of a sport like this. And then even beyond the fly fishing, you've got organizations that do things with surfing and vets. and taking care of horses and vets and all kinds of different sort of therapeutic uh, pursuits. And so, um, you know, the, the film is not specifically about any one story, but, you know, in the run-up to the film, we had a lot of opportunities to talk with veterans, to sit by the river with them and hear their stories. And we incorporated a number of those into, into the film. Wow. You know, because I've interviewed several vets myself uh, for various charities and organizations, and then psychologists that have actually started using psychedelics to help them as therapeutics uh, with what they call, what's it called, uh, micro dosing, which really seemed weird to me. And I think fly fishing is a far better addiction than that. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, I mean, you've got studies coming out now with Johns Hopkins that are looking into using MDMA, also known as ecstasy, um, as a way of sort of, um, you know, opening up their mind to see things in a different way. It's been used with trauma victims. Obviously, it's still illegal, but, you know, with, with Johns Hopkins and other other uh, medical providers leading the way, they're looking into that as well. But like I said, like you said, that may not work for everybody and it may not be some, what somebody wants to do. And so, you know, um, looking at fly fishing as, a, as an opportunity for that, you know, it was funny when we were making the movie, we were kind of dancing around the scene where uh, the doctor played by Patricia Heaton is is suggesting to Sinqua's character that he go fly fishing. And we kind of, originally it was set up as this like novel thing that nobody had ever heard of. And I was talking to Steven just said, let's, why don't we not just not pretend that it's never happened before? Like, let's just lean into the fact that she's like, hey, you know, this has been studied. We don't have a program, but maybe you go fish with the guy, you know, like it seems to be helping. And so once we did that, everything kind of clicked, but it's that idea that this is happening all across the country you know, um, and and whether it's just two guys who are vets going fishing or it's an organized event, um, it it's proving to have a, a, a huge benefit. And Perry, take us through your psychological trip uh, down the world of fly fishing. Um, you know, as Lu yeah, you know, Lucy's the, character. I got the opportunity to learn how to fly fish and I completely fell in love with it. Um, it makes it, it quickly made a lot of sense to me why it is. Um, so therapeutic, but um, as Josh has explained before too, like there, he wanted to have, um, not everyone can specifically relate to combat. So he wanted to make sure there was another character. Steven, our writer as well, wanted to make sure there was another character that provided um, a way in for the audience, someone that um, is dealing with trauma and loss um, in her own way. So um, there's definitely a way that the characters, the vets and especially, particularly Sinqua Walls and, 
who plays Coulter and my character relate about loss and how when you feel like your world stops and the world around you keeps going, um, how you kind of jump back, jump back in the current around you and find clarity and resilience to keep going. You know, with the military, there's boot camp eight to 12 weeks, depending what branch you're, you're a part of to build you up to become that soldier, Marine, seaman, you know, et cetera. And then after your tour is over, it's not like World War One or World War Two, where they put you on a boat and you had this three month journey to come home and commiserate with other yeah. veterans yeah. And, and deal with a support group before support groups ever existed. You know, it's just on a plane and go, go home. Should there be some sort of like decompression return to civilization boot camp, you know, another eight to 12 weeks to help veterans uh, ease back into normal society? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, Sebastian Younger talks about this in the book Tribe, um, where, you know, only I think like five and I'm, I, my figures could be wrong, um, but only like five percent of active duty military actually experience combat. And yet um, like something like 50 percent of, of veterans have put in for uh, PTSD coverage. Um, and so there's a huge disparity there because it just the, the combat nature doesn't seem to be the only thing that you can account for. And one of the things that he looks at in his research is that what it really is, is, is the loss of a community. You know, you uh, are in the military, you live, breathe, uh, you know, with, with this group of people, you know, you go through boot camp, you go overseas, like you are together with them. They are literally 24 seven, your family. And when you're done, you're out. You know, you separate, you go your separate ways. And you know, for a lot of, um, of veterans, it, it seems to be just the loss of that community, the loss of sort of your structure and the loss of your uh, identity as a as a Marine or as a, you know, a military, active duty military um, can be really profound. And especially when then you re, you're, you're sort of just left figure out your reintegration on your own. You know, we're not really set up to support the re-entry of veterans into society. And especially when you come back to a country um, like America right now, which is very divided, very alienating, um, does not operate in the same way that that close-knit community of the military operates. And that can be really, really challenging for people, for veterans, you know, and their reintegration. And, um, and so I think that, you know, there's starting to be work done to help with that. Obviously, organizations that partnering vets with fly fishing and all that kind of stuff is there, um, you know, but we probably need it on a much bigger scale. And you know, is it almost looking like the Vietnam era for the veterans coming home? Because after Vietnam, you know, they were called baby killers. They were mistreated. They didn't have the respect that their parents had coming back from World War One and then Korea. And now we're seeing kind of the same thing happening again, where the country is divided the way it was in the late 60s, early 70s. And now the veterans kind of falling through the well, not kind of, but actually falling through the cracks. Yeah, I mean, I think we're probably much better set up than we were, you know, to help um, than we were back in the 60s, 70s. Um, you know, I think that, um, you know, one of the interesting things was we got to, so the opening of the film, you know, which is all takes place in Afghanistan, uh, we were able to, to to partner with the U.S. Marine Corps uh, Entertainment Liaison Office and um, and the Department of Defense. So we received total support from the U.S. government in, in the making of this film and uh, provided with vehicles and personnel and uh, locations and all that kind of stuff to really make it authentic. And one of the things was, you know, when we made the film, obviously we hadn't yet left Afghanistan. And uh, it was only after the film that we were talking with the, our connection, our, our partners over there. And they were like, you know, it's really kind of crazy what's happening. You have your, in your movie, you have this Vietnam vet sort of connecting to this Af younger vet of Afghanistan and Iraq. And now we're seeing that happening in real life. You're seeing Vietnam vets reaching out to Afghanistan vets and saying, we know exactly what you went through. We know exactly what you're feeling. And those emotions of like, what did I just do all this for? What was the point of it? Um, and so you're finding that that sort of multi-generational connection occurring in real life that is then sort of um, coincidentally mirrored in the film. And Perry, let's take us through Lucy and you getting the script that that Stephen Camilio is on. Camilio. Camilio. Thank you. 
Sorry, Stephen. Uh, forgive me for mispronouncing your last name. Um, you know, Stephen Camillo has has written this story. You know, he's worked for ESPN magazine. He's worked for you know Men's Journal and all sorts of other sports and entertainment publications. And now to have a story about veterans and having his book, you know, other books adapted into film. What is it like when you get the script and you start reading what Lucy is like and developing the character, and then? You know, when it finally the performance comes to life, you know, what do you learn about yourself as a person? Because everything that you bring to a character, you take away from it as well. Yeah, I mean, I definitely have experienced my own loss in my own life. Most people have. Um, so that was that was easy for me to connect to. Um, I also was really impressed by the fact that this female romantic lead was so much more than that. Um, there's an interesting relationship that I think Josh really honed as well. That is, uh, without giving too much away, there's obviously a potential for romance between um, Lucy and Coulter, but uh, there's also a friendship and understanding that develops there. And um, he kind of wanted to bring attention to those relationships in your life that are temporary and have a huge impact, but eventually, you know, you kind of meet and then you branch off and what you take from those relationships and why they are so meaningful um, and why they might teach you where you're headed next. And we really wanted to make sure that Lucy had her own agency and her own arc and her own story. Yes. Um, you know, I, I did not want her to just be sort of there to support Coulter, um, you know, and I wanted, I was interested, I'm interested in these relationships that, you know, where these people kind of come into your life for a specific reason and you end up sharing and influencing one another, but then you kind of, you know, it, it may not last, like nobody's getting married here, you know, <laughs> and, um, and uh, I just thought that was so beautiful. And I think that for Lucy's character to work, she's got to be a, an actual character. She, she's, you know, as much as this is about sort of Brian and Sinclair's relationship, Lucy is a very, very big factor in this story. And I think in a lot of ways there are probably, it's easier for people to connect to what Lucy's going through than it is to connect with what Coulter's been through. Um, so, you know, it was just, it was very important that she's just a full, fully fleshed out character. Um, and uh, so Stephen and I did a lot of work to make sure that that was the case. And then obviously you get input from Perry and, once she's on board and, and, but it was, it was great to see it come to life, you know, like you sort of have a loose vision, but that vision is always unfulfilled until you cast it. And then once you cast it, it just becomes a lot of fun. You start figuring out who is, who is this person? What is she dressed like? What is she, what's in her house? You know, um, what's her dreams and losses and why is she working a library, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And, and that's always the best part. You know, once you cast and you're getting into it, you start seeing these characters come to life, performing these words. Um, that's always the most fun. Yeah. When it's something that's this heavy of a story and it's rooted in reality, but it's fictionalized. How are you able to keep the humor on set? Because these are real life issues that are people that people are dealing with. Yet it's still a performance. Yeah, I think it's about just being respectful to the situation. I think like, obviously, you know, um, when you have the lighter moments, you want to encourage that, you know, and it is, you know, it's weird because I think that like in a lot of cases, you find that the the heavier the sets, you know, the story is like whether it's heavy drama or even horror or like whatever, the more humor you're going to find on set. <laughs> you know, uh, because it just has to be, you just have to lighten it up. And I think in our case, like, you know, there are obviously some actors that come in and, and they live in the character and they're very sort of, you know, I guess, method uh, about it. Um, that wasn't the case with this. We didn't have anybody that was really sort of living in that, asking that we call him by that character name. And so, you know, I like to have fun on set. I like to encourage sort of a lightness, you know, because I think like, you know, it, it's it's one thing to live in these, it's a lot to live in these characters and characters that are experiencing this, a lot to direct characters like that. And I think having just some levity and having some like, you know, laughs. And I mean, you even look at like mirroring that in the military. Military is a life and death situation. Yet those guys are ribbing each other and joking and making fun of each other all the time, you know? And so um, I think that's the only way to approach something like that is to just 
lighten the mood a little bit, you know, but, but it is then being respectful for when cameras are rolling, you know, it's, it's creating a safe environment. It's creating an environment that's, um, allows for performance that allows for vulnerability, you know, and whether that's asking the cast and crew to, or the, the crew to leave, um, whether that's just limiting the, the footprint of the crew around you, whether that's just keeping it quiet in between takes, you know, as a director, the, reading that kind of just comes from experience and knowing when to interject with a joke and when to just give actors their space as they're, as they're living in, in a performance. And so what you're indirectly telling us is that Perry was the pr biggest practical joker on set. For sure. hundred uh, percent. Do we need to talk about the Sasquatch? Costume? <laughs> no. no. Uh, so we were filming. I was, wait, out I was kidding. And it turns out that you're oh, really no. on a Bigfoot tree. Okay. Now I'm in. Was the jokester. So we're filming out at a ranch uh, with a casting pond and we're filming a scene and uh, we're setting up and all of a sudden I see this like, I mean, it looks like a bear. Uh, you know, we're out in the wilderness, wilderness. You're, there's a lot of land around. And I see like this dark brown bear like figure moving through the woods. And I'm like, what is that? And then other people start to pick up. And then it turns out it's this like person in a Sasquatch costume. And I'm like, what, the, what is going on? Like, I, it's more weirded out than freaked out. You're just like, what, what is this? And then turns out it's Perry who had uh, arranged this whole thing and was sneaking up on the cast and crew to give us a little, I don't know if it was supposed to be frightening, but it was funny. <laughs> I was waiting in the, I was waiting in the woods. You know, she was waiting the... <laughs> in the woods for a while in this wool Sasquatch outfit for the crew uh, to in get the there. middle of Montana. That's like a hundred degrees down. It's like kudos to her. For sure. But um, before I forget, I mean, you you were asking, obviously, to go with the humor. We did have so much fun, but there was it was wonderful to see some of the joy that the real veterans got to be on camera for the first time. So there are um, quite a few veterans in the film and um, we got to partner with Warriors in Quiet Waters and you do get some of them. That was their first time ever being in a film or being on a set. So to get to see their joy of you know, feeling like they're getting their spotlight was, there's a lot of laughter and fun there as well. You know, at some point it goes from, you know, being the dream job to being a career. And did this help both of you remember why you got into the arts in the first place? Yeah, I think so. I, you know, as, as a director, there's often a lot of ego involved, you know, <laughs> And uh, I've been in situations and on other movies where I, you know, I felt like, well, this is my film and this is the way I'm telling the story. And, you know, it's really about kind of what I want. And, and what was really different for me about this film was I really just kind of felt like I was. The story, I best version of this film as opposed to what I wanted as a director, you know, and, um, and that was really different and it obviously felt really good. Um, you know, and what I so in liked about this film was that it's just about something other than just a movie, right? It's not just a story. This is, you know, a real life thing that is really happening and it sort of allows us to talk about how this is occurring in the world and, and a real thing. And, you know, and so to just make sure I was so protective of, of Stephen's words and a story that he wrote and protective of, you know, the what we had gotten out of real veterans and what they had shared with us. It was just really important to me that we get this right. And often so many of my battles, not that I had battles, but so often my stress and my, you know, focus on set was about making sure that we did get that right. And we did do honor to those sacrifices that were made uh, and the experiences that they've had. And just doing it as, as honestly as possible. So like even in the edit, you know, I, I mean, I, normally you go, oh, this is the film and I need this frame. And I, I was I was sending cuts of the film to the producers every day, you know, taking out 20 minutes, putting 15 minutes back in, trying things totally open to that process in a way that I hadn't really been before. So it was definitely a growing experience for sure, um, you know, on my on my continued path to to of directing. Fantastic. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. So real quick. Remind us the time and screening at the San Diego International Film Festival. And the final question is, what will civilians learn about military life and the readjustment to being civilians? And what will 
military personnel get from this coming home and being able to find a charity like Fly Fishing or any other organization? Yeah, well, the screening time, we're going to be screening on Saturday, October 22nd, I believe at uh, 6 p.m., 6.30 p.m. Um, tickets are available on the, the San Diego International Film Festival website. Um, Perry will be there. We're going to have um, some really great friends. A lot of the cast and crew will be there as well. There'll be a party afterwards, so come on out. Um, and we hope you guys uh, can make it and see it on the big screen. Obviously, that's that's the dream. Um as far as, you know, what people will take from it, I, I think that for those that for civilians, it'll be just the experience of the process. You know, often you think of the military and then that's it. You don't often think about vets. We celebrate Veterans Day. We celebrate Memorial Day, but we don't really have that connection to what that means. And my hope is that, you know, they 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 see that there is a lot of um, there's a big runway there from coming, you know, getting out of the military to sort of leaving a living a functional life. And it's not easy. And it's not easy even if you start fly fishing. It's not even easy even if you find a passion or something else to be doing. It is incredibly challenging every day. And, um, you know, that, that, that can be, but the power of these groups, the power of what they're doing and the work that they're doing can be completely life-changing for these vets. And I've seen it. Uh, by talking to these guys as far as the military goes i think it's just this this idea that listen man if you're or or woman if you're uh, suffering if you're um you know experiencing the effects of ptsd there are people and groups around who want to help um and that there is light at the end of the tunnel and there is finding something worth living for and so uh the more we can get that message out there i think the more vets can be saved right now i think you know, statistics say there's 17 veterans that commit suicide every day. And um, that's just a travesty considering what they've done, you know, to protect this country and stand up for, for, for this country. And so, you know, the more we can do to get that number down, the more we can make people aware of, of what's available to them, uh, the better off this country is going to be. Well, Josh and Perry, thank you so much. Congratulations on the film. I didn't want to give too much away in that regard, but I'm glad that people are going to come see it in San Diego at the International Film Festival. Have a wonderful day and a great weekend. Thanks, Robert. Appreciate nice. it. Thanks for taking the time. Absolutely.